Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our podcast. We're now in Chapter 5, The Greek World, The Bronze Age to the Roman Conquest. When we start off Chapter 5, we are presented with the Cup of Nestor. That Cup of Nestor holds immense historic and cultural importance. Its discovery has enriched our understanding of the material culture, our sacred traditions, and linguistic heritage of the Mycenaean civilizations. It serves as a tangible link to a bygone era, allowing us to glimpse the lives and beliefs of the people who lived thousands of years ago. The colonization of Pithecosai and the presence of artifacts like the Cup of Nestor highlight the extensive maritime trade routes established by the Greeks during this period. Greek colonies serve as vital hubs for commerce and cultural exchange, linking the Eastern Mediterranean with the Western Mediterranean and beyond. Stretching across millennia, the Greek world stands as a testament to the extraordinary achievements of humanity, its rich history to its vibrant culture and profound influence on our modern world. We will embark on a journey through the Greek world, exploring its history, culture, and enduring legacy. To truly grasp the essence of the Greek world, we must explore its historical foundations. Ancient Greece witnessed the rise of the polis, or city-states, each with its own distinct political, social, and cultural identity. We will explore the formation of these city-states, their rivalries, alliances, and the profound impact they had on the course of Greek history. Also, Greece, Greece's geographical features presented a formidable challenge to agricultural productivity. With its mountainous terrain, rugged landscapes, and a predominantly Mediterranean climate, the country faced limitations such as rocky soils, aridity, and limited arable land. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to delve a little bit deeper into the graph geographic features that factored into the shape of Greece's agricultural potential, understanding how its unique characteristics have influenced farming practices throughout history. Despite the challenges, the ancient Greeks displayed remarkable ingenuity in adapting to their agricultural limitations. They used innovative farming techniques such as terracing hillsides to create arable land, implementing irrigation systems to overcome water scarcity, and employing crop rotation to optimize soil fertility. Their resourcefulness and knowledge laid the foundation for sustainable agricultural practices that continue to be relevant today. Greece's agricultural landscape shaped the daily lives and traditions of its rural communities. The daily routines of ancient Greek farmers, their festivals, rituals, and practices associated with the agricultural cycle. Understanding the integral connection between the land and the people helps us appreciate the resilience and adaptability of ancient Greek agricultural communities. Greece's challenging agricultural landscape has been transformed by the resilience and ingenuity of its people. And that's where we have so much of these great innovations in modern advancements. The Greeks have navigated the constraints of their environment, turning limitations into opportunities. And as we now move forward through our chapter, why don't we now explore the captivating Bronze Age? A period shrouded in myth and legend, the Greek Bronze Age witnessed the rise and fall of powerful civilizations, the splendor of royal palaces, and the rock tales immortalized in epics. As we journey further back in time to uncover the mysteries and marvels of this extraordinary era. The Greek Bronze Age, also known as the Minoan or Mycenaean civilizations, mark a crucial period in prehistoric and ancient history of Greece. It's characterized by the excessive use of bronze, a metal alloy made primarily of copper and tin, which revolutionized tools, weapons, and various aspects of material culture. The Minoan and Mycenaean civilizations had their own writing systems, known as Linear A and Linear B, respectively. While Linear A remains undeciphered, Linear B has provided us with remarkable insights into the early Greek language and the administrative practices of the Mycenaean civilization. These scripts offer a glimpse into the complexities of these ancient societies, their cultural practices, and their effort to record and communicate information. They remind us of the rich and diverse human communication and importance of the written word in unraveling the mysteries of the past. 
Now, as we move forward, we have to understand what becomes the next period is the Greek Dark Ages. To understand the Greek Dark Ages, we must first explore why the Bronze Age collapsed. The Greek Dark Ages is a term used by historians and archaeologists to describe a period of cultural decline and limited historical evidence in ancient Greece following the collapse of the Mycenaean civilization or Bronze Age. It is often called dark not because it was entirely devoid of culture and societal activity, but because of the lacks of monumental architecture and the scarcity of written records make it difficult for us to fully understand this period. We will examine the causes of this decline, including the invasion of foreign powers, internal conflicts, and economic disruptions. By understanding the context of this transitional period, we can appreciate the challenges that Greece faced and the subsequent changes that occurred. And so, as we said, this is becoming very a, a very dark period of time because of the loss of writing and the loss of monumental structures and architecture. And so there was a loss of writing and cultural disruption. One of the defining features of this period is that loss of writing. The linear B script, which we can decipher, was used by many of the Mycenaeans and it fell into disuse, resulting in the lack of written records. During the Dark Ages, there was a significant shift in settlement patterns. We will examine this evidence of abandoned palaces and fortified citadels and the emergence of a smaller decentralized communities. The period also saw migrations and population movements within the outside of Greece, shaping the demographic landscape. While the Dark Ages were characterized by cultural decline, there was also instances of cultural preservation and adaption. We can examine the continuity of certain religious practices, folk traditions, and oral storytelling as important vehicles for passing down cultural knowledge. Through the study of pottery styles, burial practices, and archaeological discoveries, we can piece together glimpses, glimpses of the cultural evolution that occurred during this period. The Dark Ages eventually gave away to the Archaic period, marking the revival and renaissance of Greek civilization. The Greek Archaic period, spanning from 700 to 480 BCE, marked a significant turning point in Greek history, characterized by the emergence of city-states, the birth of democracy, and the flourishing of artistic and intellectual achievements. The Archaic period coincides with the addition of a new form of warfare called the hope-like phalanx. This new way of fighting that spread around the Greek world in the early Archaic period also coincided with, the, uh, coincided with the rise of another key institution for subsequent Greek history, the polis, or city-state. The whole life phalanx was a new mode of fighting that did not rely on the skill of individuals, rather it required all soldiers in line to work together as a whole. Historians do not know which came into existence first, the phalanx or the polis, but the two clearly reflect a similar ideology. In fact, the phalanx could be seen as a microcosm of the polis, exemplifying the chief values of the polis on a small scale. From the early archaic period to the conquest of the Greek world by Philip and Alexander in the late 4th century BCE, the polis was a central unit of organization in the Greek world. The archaic period was characterized by significant Greek colonization efforts, leading to the establishment of new colonies throughout the Mediterranean and beyond. The Archaic period was also a time of sporting and cultural events that brought together Greeks from different city-states. The most influential of these were the Olympic Games. Beginning in about 776 BCE, Olympic Games were held in Olympia every four years to honor the god Zeus. They drew competitors from all over the Greek world and even Persia. The Panhellenic appeal of the Olympics is signified by the impact that these games had on Greek politics. For instance, a truce was in effect throughout the Greek world for the duration of each Olympics. In addition, the Olympics provided a panhellenic system of dating events by Olympiads, or four-year cycles. Today, as we move forward, we will explore the advice forms of government that emerged in ancient Greece during this archaic period. Specifically, we'll focus on the systems of aristocracy, democracy, and tyranny and their significance in shaping the political landscape of the transformative era. Now, as we move forward, we'll proceed to really discuss what these particular systems mean. 
and what they are all about. And so let's start with the beginning, aristocracy, democracy, and tyranny. Aristocracy refers to a system of government in which political power is held by a small privileged elite, often based on noble birth or wealth. Democracy is a form of government in which power resides for the citizens who collectively participate in decision making and have equal rights and responsibility. And last, tyranny. In the context of ancient Greek, refers to a ruler who seizes power unlawfully and exercises it in a harsh or oppressive manner. In some Greek city-states, the discontent with aristocratic rule led to the establishment of early forms of democracy. Athens, in particular, is known for its transition from aristocracy to democracy during this period. The forms of leaders like Solon and Glisthenes introduced greater political inclusivity and citizen participation. Solon's reforms aim to alleviate social and economic tension by granting more political right to non-aristocratic citizens. Glisthenes later on instituted radical democratic reforms, introducing the concept of a citizen assembly and creating a system where all citizens could participate in decision making. And it's the push for democratic reforms. There were instances of individuals seizing power and establishing tyrannical rule. Tyrants in this context were not necessarily oppressive rulers, but rather leaders who gained power by force or by popular support, often with the promise of addressing social and political grievances. Tyrants were typically seen as protectors of the common people and aimed to challenge the existing aristocratic order. They often implemented reforms to address social inequalities and ensure stability. The introduction of democracy and the rise of tyranny had profound impacts on Greek society during the archaic period. Democracy, with its emphasis on citizen participation and equality, laid the foundation for the development of democratic systems in later periods, influenced the political thought of ancient and modern societies. Tyranny, although often short-lived, brought about changes in governance and challenged traditional power structures. The rise of tyrants highlighted the aspiration of the non-aristocratic classes for greater political rights and social justice. The, archa the archaic period in Greece witnessed a dynamic political landscape marked by aristocracy, democracy, and tyranny. These developments set the stage for the future evolution of democratic principles and the exploration of different forms of governance in ancient Greece. And that now leads us to another part of our chapter as it discusses the city-states are polis of Sparta and Athens. Despite both being integral to the Greek world, these city-states were starkly different in their values, political systems, and societal structures. Sparta was renowned for its militaristic nature and dedication to preserving its military dominance. The Spartan society aimed at maintaining strict control over its citizen soldiers, ensuring their readiness for defense and aggression. Sparta's primary concern was the security of its own state and the subjugation of its neighbors, as exemplified by the Spartan-led Peloponnesian League, which aimed to maintain Spartan hegemony in the region. This militaristic approach was seen as essential to the survival and stability of the Spartan state. Athens, on the other hand, focused on its naval power and the promotion of democratic ideals. The Athenian Navy, known as the Delian League, sought to protect the city-state's maritime interests and protect its influence across the Aegean Sea. Athens adopted a more diplomatic approach, engaging in alliances, negotiations, and democratic decision-making. The Athenian Empire, although criticized for its imperialistic tendencies, aimed to spread its democratic values and foster economic prosperity through trade and cultural exchange. But of course, this great civilization as it becomes a part of this Greek empire, of this Greek civilization, tended to have enemies. One of the greatest enemies, as we see in our text, were the Persians. The Persian Wars were a series of conflicts between the Greek city-states and the mighty Persian Empire and had far-reaching consequences shaping the course of Western civilization. To understand the Persian Wars, we must first grasp the fastness and power of the Persian Empire. Under the rule of Cyrus the Great, known as the Achaemenid Empire, Cyrus was able to expand its territory, stretching from Anatolia to Egypt, encompassing diverse peoples and cultures. The empire boasted a formidable military, advanced administrative systems, and a centralized government. 
The Persian Wars were sparked by were sparked by the Ionian Revolt, a rebellion of Greek city states in Asia Minor against Persian rule. These Greek cities, known as the Ionian Greeks, sought to overthrow Persian domination and regain their independence. They received support from Athens and Eritrea, which sent troops to aid their cause. However, despite initial victories, the Ionian Revolt ultimately failed. The Persian Empire, under the leadership of King Darius I, crushed the rebellion and sought to punish those who had supported it. This retaliation would lay groundwork for larger conflicts to come in the future. In 490 BCE, Darius again launched the first Persian invasion of Greece. A vast Persian army set its sights on Athens, seeking retribution for support of the Ionian Revolt. The Greek city-states led by Athens and Sparta united in common cause to defend their freedom and way of life. At the Battle of Marathon, a smaller Athenian force led by the renowned general Miltiades achieved a remarkable victory against the Persian army. This unexpected triumph not only saved Athens from immediate danger, but also instilled a sense of confidence and pride among the Greeks. In 480 BCE, the Persian Empire, now under the rule of Xerxes I, launched a second invasion of Greece. This time, Xerxes sought to conquer all of Greece, bringing the city-states under Persian dominion. However, the Greek city-states under the leadership of Sparta and Athens formed a defensive alliance called the Hellenic League. They devised a strategy to confront the Persian forces led by King Leonides of Sparta and the Athenian naval commander Themoscles. At the Battle of Thermopylae, a small force of Greek soldiers, including the legendary Spartan warriors, held off the massive Persian army for several days, displaying extraordinary bravery and resistance. Although the Greeks were ultimately defeated, this battle served as a symbol of Greek heroism and the willingness to sacrifice for freedom. Simultaneously, the Battle of Salamis unfolded at sea where the Greek naval fleet, led by the Athenians, confronted the Persian navy. Throughout the strategic maneuvering and superior naval tactics, the Greeks emerged victorious, inflicting significant damage on the Persian fleet. The Persian Wars had profound impact on Greece and the wider world. The victories at Marathon, Thermopylae, and Salamis bolstered Greek confidence, reinforcing the idea that a united Greek force could resist even the mighty Persian Empire. The wars highlighted the resilience and determination of the Greek city-state to preserve their freedom and democratic ideals. Furthermore, the, per the Persian Wars marked the first instances of East-West conflict in history. The clash between the Persian Empire with its vast resources and military might and the Greek city-states with their individualism and innovative tactics set the stage for future encounters between Eastern and Western powers. The Persian Wars were a turning point in ancient Greek history. They demonstrated the power of collective resistance, showcased Greek heroism, and sparked a sense of cultural identity and unity among the city-states. The legacy of the Persian Wars would reverberate throughout the centuries, shaping the course of Western civilization. And with that, that really brings about what becomes a very large pinnacle of human achievement the Greek classical period. This era witnessed the zenith of Greek civilization, marked by the golden age of Athens, profound philosophical thought, and extraordinary cultural accomplishment. To understand the classical period, we must first examine the historical context and the foundations upon which it was built. We will explore the aftermath of the Persian Wars and the significance of Greek victories in shaping the collective psyche, from the Delian League to the Peloponnesian War, we will unravel the political landscape and the rivalries that define the period. The Delian League was an alliance formed in 478 BCE, shortly after the Persian Wars, with the goal of defending Greek city-states against future Persian invasions. The Delian League, ultimately led by Athens, comprised various Greek states that contributed ships, troops, or financial contributions to the common defense. As the Delian League power grew, Athens gradually transformed it into an empire under its own control. This shift in power dynamics was driven by Athens' political ambitions, economic interests, and desire to expand its influence in the Greek world. 
Athens, with its formidable navy and skilled statesmen such as Pericles, utilized the resources and contributions of the League for its own benefit. The League's treasury was eventually relocated to Athens, consolidating the city's control of the alliance's finances. However, the Athenian Empire also faced challenges and generated resentment among its allies. The imposition of a tribute payment and Athens' interference in the internal affairs of other city-states caused tension to rise in the League. Sparta, a rival city-state, eventually formed the Peloponnesian League in opposition to Athens' growing power. The rivalry ultimately led to the Peloponnesian War, a conflict that lasted from 431 BCE to 404 BCE and resulted in Athens' eventual defeat and the end of its empire. The consequences of the Athenian Empire and the eventual downfall were significant. The war not only devastated the Greek city-states, but also marked a turning point in Greek history, leading to a decline in Athenian power and a shift in the balance of power in the Greek world. Despite the adversities of war, Athens maintained its reputation as a center of intellectual brilliance. Scholars, philosophers, and thinkers thrived amidst the political uncertainties and sought to understand the human conditions and explore the nature of this reality. One notable figure during this period, the one notable figure during this period was Socrates, whose method of questioning and pursuit of wisdom inspired a new era of philosophical inquiry. Socrates engaged in lively debates and discussions challenging the assumptions of his contemporaries and fostering critical thinking. The cultural achievements of Athens during the Peloponnesian War left an enduring legacy that continues to shape Western civilization even to this day. The intellectual and philosophical traditions established during this period laid the foundation for future thinkers and philosophers. The cultural achievements of this period have left an indelible mark on Western civilization, remind us of the enduring power of human creativity, resilience, and the pursuit of knowledge. And now that brings us to our next part of our chapter, the 4th century BCE. This marked a time of recovery and reflection for Greece after the devastating Peloponnesian War. Athens, once the dominant city-state, experienced a decline in power and influence, while Sparta, the victor of the war, struggled itself to maintain its supremacy. The war had left Greece fractured and vulnerable, paving the way for new forces to emerge. And as we see in the year 399, during this time, Socrates himself found that he was facing charges brought against him by several influential Athenians. The accusations included impiety and corrupting the youth of Athens. These charges stem from Socrates' habit of challenging traditional religious beliefs and his influence on the younger generation, which some saw as a threat to the stability of Athenian society. Socrates' trial took place in the Athenian court. A jury of 501 citizens were selected to decide his fate. During the trial, Socrates defended himself against the charges, refusing to compromise his commitment to philosophical inquiry and truth-seeking. He eloquently argued for the, the value of critical thinking and the pursuit of knowledge, asserting that his intentions were to improve the moral character of Athenian citizens. Despite his spirited defense, the jury found Socrates guilty by a narrow margin. The customary penalty for such offenses was death, and the jury, in line with Athenian law, sent Socrates to drink a cup of poison hemlock. Socrates willingly accepted his fate, refusing offers to escape or renounce his philosophical beliefs. Socrates' execution marked a significant event in Greek history and left a lasting impact on the philosophical tradition. His commitment to truth and integrity, even in the face of adversity, solidified his reputation as a martyr for intellectual freedom and independent thought. The trial of Socrates had a profound influence on the philosophical landscape of ancient Greece. Socrates' teachings, as recorded by his disciple Plato, formed the foundation of Western philosophy. The trial highlighted the tension between philosophical inquiry and societal norms, raising important questions about the role of philosophy in public life and the limits of free expression. It also demonstrated the clash between philosophical inquiry and societal norms, ultimately leading to the conviction and execution of one of history's most influential thinkers. Socrates' unwavering commitment to truth and intellectual integrity 
continues to inspire philosophers and scholars to this day. His legacy serves as a reminder of the enduring importance of critical thinking and the pursuit of wisdom in our societies. One of the most significant developments also during this particular time is the rise of the Kingdom of Macedon under the leadership of Philip II. Philip, a skilled strategist and diplomat, sought to unify Greece under his Macedonian rule. Through military prowess and political maneuvering, Philip gradually expanded his influence, forming alliances and gaining control over Greek city-states. Philip's innovative military tactics, including the use of, of the phalanx formation, proved highly effective, allowing him to secure victories and establish Macedon as a dominant power in Greece. His ambition to unite Greece set the stage for his son, Alexander the Great, to carry out one of history's most remarkable conquests. The 4th century BCE witnessed the meteoric rise of Alexander the Great, who inherited his father's vision of a united Greece and went on to forge one of the most expansive empires the world has ever seen. Alexander's military campaigns, which stretched from Greece to Egypt, Persia, and beyond, reshaped the political and cultural landscape of the known world. Under Alexander's rule, Greek culture spread across the vast territories he conquered, leading to a blending of Greek, Persian, and other local cultures. This period, known as the Hellenistic Era, witnessed the flourishing of art, literature, and philosophy. Cities such as Alexandria and Egypt became centers of learning and intellectual exchange. This fourth century was also a time of significant philosophical developments as well in Greece. The legacy of Plato and Socrates and Aristotle continued to influence philosophical thought, but new schools of philosophy emerged as well with its own theories and perspectives. The Cynics, Stoics, and Epicureans offered distinct philosophical frameworks that addressed questions of ethics, human nature, and the pursuit of, good, of a good life. These philosophical schools engaged in debates and discussions, fostering a culture of intellectual inquiry and reflection. Philosophers such as Zeno Asidium, founder of Stoicism, and Epicurus, who emphasized the pursuit of pleasure and tranquility, left a lasting impact on the philosophical landscape of Greece. This fourth century was a period also of transition for Greece. The rise of Macedon led by Philip and later his son Alexander reshaped the balance of power and ushered the Hellenistic era. Despite the challenges and divisions that followed the Peloponnesian War, Greece continued to be a center of cultural and intellectual exploration with significant advancements in philosophy, art, and literature. And this legacy of this period continues to shape our understanding of ancient Greece and its enduring influence on the world. This Hellenistic culture, a period of immense culture and intellectual exchange that followed the conquest of Alexander the Great, Really, during this era, Greek culture spread far and wide, merging with local traditions and giving the rise to a vibrant and diverse civilization. And as we explore even more this holistic culture, we need to know exactly what does holistic mean. The term holistic refers to the period that followed the reign of Alexander the Great, roughly spanning from the late 4th century BCE to the late 1st century BCE. It was at this time a significant political, social, and cultural change as the vast empire that Alexander had established fragmented into various successor states. One of the defining features of Hellenistic culture was its synthesis of Greek, Persian, Egyptian, and other local traditions. As the Greeks interacted with diverse peoples they encountered during their conquests, a rich, a rich exchange of ideas, customs, and artistic styles took place. This fusion of cultures gave rise to a unique and cosmopolitan civilization that spread across the Mediterranean, the Near East, and beyond. Hellenistic art and architecture showcased a departure from the idealist forms of the classical era. Sculptures became more expressive, capturing a range of emotions and portraying individuals in a realistic and dynamic poses. The fame wing victory Esamathesi and the sculptures of the Pergamon altar are prime examples of the Hellenistic style. The influence 
of Hellenistic culture extended far beyond the time period in which it flourished. It's in fact can be seen in subsequent civilizations, particularly in the Roman Empire, which absorbed and incorporated many aspects of Hellenistic art, philosophy, and architecture. The spread of Greek language and culture through the Hellenistic kingdoms also paved the way for the eventual spread of Christianity in the Roman world. Hellenistic culture was a dynamic and transformative era that emerged in the wake of Alexander the Great's conquest. It blended Greek, Persian, Egyptian, and other traditions, giving rise to a cosmopolitan civilization that left a lasting impact on art, architecture, literature, philosophy, science, and mathematics. The legacy of Hellenistic culture continues to shape our understanding of the ancient world and serves as a testament to the power of a cultural exchange and synthesis. This podcast episode has been produced under a CC by NCND license. All episodes in this series are made possible through the efforts of Lisa Nominkas, Christopher Gilson, Crescentio Jackson, Ryan Pierce, and Amelia Brister. Thank you for listening.